<laughs> we are back on Morning Life. Thanks for joining us uh, this morning talking about combating addiction. Not a funny topic, but one that these people deal with and the success stories make them smile. Um, they're with uh, The Next Door, which is a, a group here. It's been, as you said, was it over a decade mm -hmm. here in Nashville. They're over mm -hmm. on Charlotte across from Red Cross and they help women dealing with addiction issues. And I appreciate you all coming on. It's great you guys do this, mm -hmm. okay? Because no one gets rich helping people get over addiction. <laughs> You're doing this out of the goodness of your heart, though I know you get paid, but it must be very satisfying when you see yourself helping these folks. It is. Which is yeah. a very, big, it big is. deal. It's very, a, it really important we have groups like the next door. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Wendy. Wendy, good morning. Hi, Wendy. Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning ladies. Good morning. Good morning. I watch you every morning when I get my kids to school. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yes. I heard one of the ladies say something about addiction starting with some ladies with C-sections. I had two C-sections within 20 months, uh -huh. and that started my addiction on narco. Uh -huh. And then when my youngest baby was nine months old, I broke both bones in my ankle all at one time. Oh, no. So I had to have leg surgery, and I have a rod and sprues in my legs, and they started me out on Oxycontin and then Oxycodone and then Hydrocodone. And I tried to quit cold turkey and I got very sick. So the doctor told me, no, you could have a seizure or a stroke. So he put me on just five milligrams to taper me off and that didn't work. Uh, I went through detox four times. That didn't work. I had to do it on my own. I had to pray a lot. I did a lot of praying. And I did it on my own, and I've been clean for six years from pills. That's wow. Great. What that's a wonderful. great story. Did, that's interesting. By the way, when the doctors put you on these pills, did they educate you at all about just the potential for addiction when they started you on some of these, or did you just kind of find out the hard way? I kind of found out the hard way. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're doing better. You went through a tough time. She brings up an interesting point. Just She went through it initially after childbirth. What about some of your patients uh, when they get out um, and they've gone on and done well, but they need to go have another medical procedure that would require maybe some type of painkiller? What do you guys recommend for them or how do they do this? Education. Mm -hmm. They know that they have the potential to, that this it could cause a relapse, but you can't expect them to never be able to take a pain right, medication right. again. So we use uh, at least in the, some of the education classes that I've taught is you if you have m narcotics, then you turn them over to somebody to hold you accountable, and you tell the doctor you're honest mm -hmm. with your physician and mm -hmm. say I have problems with pain medication. You know, give it have him give you a limited mm -hmm. supply and then you turn the medication over to somebody you know is going to give you one when you're supposed to and not you know two That's hours. That's so tough then. though because you hear more about alcoholics and literally once they you know go through the program and they're clean one drink mm -hmm. can, and over yep. the side and so mm -hmm. I, I think if the same thing is one pill yes you may have given your bottle to someone responsible to give you one a day but you know as well as I do you can hit the street and mm -hmm. get some new ones if you want mm -hmm. and that's where I mean you're right I mean what are they supposed mm -hmm. to suffer with incredible pain mm -hmm. if they have a procedure no uh, are there just and you guys I know aren't doctors but I mean are there any other alternatives to some of these pain meds I, I do wonder about that last call if pharmaceuticals maybe will have some other pain killing you know substances that come out that would be an alternative for folks who have already become addicted to these. I think for, for some people that are protecting their recovery, yeah. they um, they're willing to they're willing to go with other medications that are a non-narcotic. Maybe not as strong, and maybe and, won't, but could. And that's some. where their that's also where their support system comes in of <clears> having <throat> people around them to to sit with them, to encourage them, to. Um, like say, if it is giving them their medication, but also being able to kind of, what are the other coping skills that they can use in sure. that time and instead of just trying to numb out real pain, the real physical mm -hmm. pain that they're feeling, but they also, if they are protecting their recovery, they, they want to figure out those other alternatives so that they can um, maybe take one or two pain pills just to get through the initial pain mm -hmm. from a procedure and then they move on to something else. Mm -hmm. And then just maybe recognize they have to tough out some minor pain. Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. I mean no one likes to feel pain but sometimes mm -hmm. you know the alternative is I'll fight through this till I heal up a bit mm -hmm. and not take more pills. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys what do you guys need now? I mean do you guys have um, I just want to throw out I mean mm -hmm. you're a nonprofit um, do you have you know donations come in what you know go ahead and pitch or do you 
you take uh, donations, volunteers? I don't know if you use that. Uh, do you hire? Are you, what are you looking for? What do you need? <laughs> well, we definitely hire um, donations, yes. Um, Sally would love if we said come and donate. Well, sure. Where, where do people <laughs> go to do something like that? Um, Is it, do you have a website? We do have a website um, right now. Can, it's yep. thenextdoor.org. Um, next door. Yes, door. So we also yeah. have a luncheon coming up in October. It's a fundraiser. People, it's a fundraiser that people mm -hmm. can buy seats to, and they get to hear success stories from actual clients, hear from staff. It's a very motivational, inspiring awesome. luncheon, mm -hmm. so they can be a part of that. They just call. They can call our um, agency, or they can go on the nextdoor.org. Nextdoor.org. Find, mm -hmm. find more information. Is there a number you want to give out, or I don't know if you have that off the top of your head. If not, we can get that later. But they can just call our main line. Mm -hmm. It's six one five two five one. Eight eight zero five. Is that also the number that people who are seeking help would call? They could call that, or they can call. I believe it's one eight hundred T N D Hope. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. One eight hundred T N D Hope. T N D Hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have a phone bank there, or whatever. I mean, is that ringing every day? Yes, it does. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Every day, like today, when you go back, there will be calls coming in. Oh, yes, sir. From yes. individuals. And is it mostly people calling um, just to get a feel for it? Or you get some people that are calling saying, I need help right now? or A little bit of both. They wanted the information. And then they, they say, it's time and I need, I need to make a decision now. And usually it's time is after they've hit rock bottom, been arrested, what? That All of the above. Yes. Rock yeah. bottom, arrested. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're calling from a hospital oh. where they've gone to detox or... Um, so you know, we, the hospitals know about you? Will they be able to refer them? I mean, you're getting referrals, right? Yeah. Yes. From a lot of hospitals. Doctors, Ooh. hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if some... I mean, do um, the courts... Can the courts the refer court, someone? Yes, they Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Can they order... Um, court order? order? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll we get have, some of that. We have some clients who are furloughed from the prison and come oh, really? finish their sentence at mm -hmm. the next door. Okay. And so the, to get them clean before they're going before to be they. released from... Right. That's awesome. Yeah. So now, And mm -hmm. those those clients are clients, hopefully, I guess, as we said, we're, we're, they're coming to you. They're not in the prison setting or anything like right. that but right. most of them are they just choose to leave can but the ones sent to you typically if they're on furlough need to stay there or they recognize they're going to spend a lot more time in jail right right mm -hmm. okay. they if they they are free to leave but then they will have the consequences of whatever they're yeah they're, exactly mm -hmm. but um, legal consequences how often does someone just say i can't handle this and walk out more than we would like. Because like. okay. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, this is hard. So, yeah, I know. It's so, a yeah, very literally. hard process. I would say that's much, yeah, that doesn't surprise more than you would like, but I bet you there's a lot that, you know, are going through and there's like, oh, I, I can't handle but this. But we get a lot that leave and then call us back and say, I'm ready now. And I wish I hadn't left, but I did, and now I'm ready. And, and then that's, they come back. And that's come what back. we hope for. If you're going to leave, at least you know that you can always mm -hmm. come back. Is there a rough number every year of how many women maybe you see just any approximate? I mean, are we talking a few hundred? So over a thousand a year, I don't know. I mean, to come through the program, any idea? I think right for to, uh, I really don't know. Maybe yeah. a but I mean, is it ballpark? I mean, is it like 10 at a time in there? Or you have, you know, through a year, you, will you see over 100 patients? I don't oh, know. Yeah. During absolutely. a year? Oh, absolutely. I was going to say, yeah. I just oh, want to yes. give a ballpark yeah. feel mm -hmm. for how big a deal it is. We can yeah. have 50 women in our residential program. Okay. And, on, and with that, too, we also um, treat pregnant women and have the ability to detox pregnant women. So mm -hmm. that is one of the That's things huge. that makes, mm -hmm. I think it makes the next door special community. in the community mm -hmm. that um, we Good. we will accept those women that you know are pregnant and they um, that's another part of it we didn't even talk about mm -hmm. guys thanks for coming on you did a thank great you. job <laughs> thank, thank you. you for coming thank on you. keep up the good work next thank door you. is awesome thank thank you. appreciate thank it you. take a break programming note right after this stay with us thanks guys if you guys ever want us to